And I talked about this in one of my videos and I got a lot of pushback from women, but we were discussing, you know, if there's a man who caters to all of your needs, you know, your bills are paid emotionally, he supports you. But the only condition is that he wants to have another woman and not meaning that he wants to sleep around. because That's different. Discipline structure is just a non-monogamous relationship. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel. So something you said stood out to me. And it's uh, a critique that we get nowadays with relationships or marriage is that we don't try hard enough to make things work. And I agree with you, by the way, because I've also been in that space where my parents, they were together. And after a certain point, I'm like, I was happy when they broke up. It was like a relief to me that they were no longer together. And I don't think that people who didn't have a two family household, they don't understand that. Like you just assume that two people are there. It's perfect. And it's always not, that's not always the case. Right. But what is the middle ground? Because the critique is that we give up too quick. And we aren't thinking about our kids because we're separating the household. So it's like, what is what is the balance between the two? And how do you expect people to navigate it? Because it's like, we, we critique either way. Listen, Gen X, shout out to y'all because a lot of y'all are my viewers. Y'all are full of shit. And this, this is what I mean by Gen X being full of shit. In as much as, you know, certain aspects of, you know, the culture, certain aspects of us as people were better back then. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we are better at now than generations before, we're a lot more honest than our parents and our grandparents. Oh, yeah. We're far more honest. Mm -hmm. And I think part of what people are having a hard time doing is wrapping their minds around um, this newfound honesty, mm -hmm. right? Like we talk about uh, women now are fast and they're harlots and this, this and that. Whereas like, who you thought your, your daddy was wasn't really your daddy. Mm -hmm. It was the milkman. <laughs> like, it was, it was a lot more polished people than talk about. There was no social media, no camera phone. So it seemed like mm -hmm. women back in the day were just these virginal, you know, chastity belt wearing women. But no, nah, they were getting down to, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, but to your point about, like, we give up more quickly, I don't, I, I, I think the difference, though, is there weren't as many outs back then. Grandpa needed, I mean, grandma needed grandpa. Mm -hmm. She couldn't get a job by herself. She couldn't own property by herself. The difference now is you can get a job by yourself. You can take care of yourself. You can buy property. You can. So the incentive for you to want to, or to relegate yourself to making it work, to white knuckling it is not as high. And I think it's a natural progression of our society. We're going to have to, um, reckon with that. And it's not to say that people back then were just more resilient. No, they just didn't have any options. Right. So we have options. So it means more now if we're able to make it work despite the options versus back then, I didn't have no other options. Yeah. Now, in hindsight, we're looking back and saying, oh, grandma was resilient and grandma was strong, this and that. What else was she going to do? Right. Grandma couldn't have a bank account in the 1970s. What else was she going to do? Right. Now, she might even think that about herself, too. Yeah, you know, these kids nowadays just let shit fall. But if she's being honest with herself mm -hmm. and she had the options that you have today, she would have stuck around. Mm -hmm. She would have stuck around. The thing that keeps us in relationships now is a lot more arbitrary. And I think that we are struggling to figure out what that thing is just because we are so materialistic. And so if I know that I can get materialistic benefits by myself, I don't think that you have a, I don't have a use for you, but you do serve a use. It's just more arbitrary. I think the best case for monogamy, and I want to do like a town hall on monogamy because I have <laughs> thoughts, but I think the best case for monogamy is children. Mm -hmm. Outside of children, I don't know if there are any other really powerful arguments especially nowadays like i remember there was a girl who went viral on twitter um a while back she was saying what if we made marriage licenses like driver's licenses 
where every 10 or so years you can either re-up, I mean, um, reapply, or, you know, it just expires. Mm. So it's not a divorce, it's not messy, whatever, it just, license expires. When you consider the fact healthcare is better, people are living longer. Mm. When you consider the fact the, the world is more accessible. When you consider the fact dating apps people are also more accessible. We might have to reimagine this institution that has existed for a long periodically time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think because we're so idealistic, we're not even willing to engage in that. Like there are a lot of people who don't, don't want kids. What's the point of you being married early then? It's, well, I think it's a mix of us doing what we are told to do. So it's just the norm. But then there's also a sense of ownership there as well. Mm. And I talked about this in one of my videos and I got a lot of pushback from women, but we were discussing, you know, if there's a man who caters to all of your needs, you know, your bills are paid emotionally, he supports you. But the only condition is that he wants to have another woman and not meaning that he wants to sleep around. because That's different. Discipline structure is just a non-monogamous relationship. What would be the reason for holding you back from that? And when you really sit and you really sit with that, a lot of it is probably, I would get jealous. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's often tied to a sense of ownership. You feel like you deserve to be attached to one person, that one person is attached to you and it should just be that way. Like I said, I'm, 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 I'm I just believe it's worth a conversation. Yeah. Um, part of understanding men, like I said earlier, is understanding that men, males are not naturally monogamous. I think, I think that is a hard pill to swallow, even for us as men, but like we're not naturally monogamous. Even when you, when you look at Biologically, a low sperm count is 15 million. Average egg count is 300,000. Mm -hmm. And you lose it as you age as a woman, right? So, like, I do think monogamy is something worth striving for from a discipline standpoint, from a, you know, personality management standpoint. It's hard to have a bunch of women and a bunch of wives. Like, People think about the threesomes and stuff like that, but it's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it's worth a conversation, particularly from a community perspective, mm -hmm. especially when you consider the fact that the type of man that a bunch of women are asking for are not in abundant supply. Mm -hmm. So either you can get with this, this dude and disrespect him along the way because he's he's he doesn't measure up to all the things you want or you can share this dude mm -hmm. who does and it's funny i was watching the episode of grapevine a while back and uh, one of the guests was saying that a monogamous society actually benefits men and a polygamous society benefits women mm. monogamy benefits men because even the lower ranked men are guaranteed to mate but in a polygamous society, you can be Miss LeBron James. You can be Miss LeBron James. Mm -hmm. You can be Miss LeBron. So women, females of any species will naturally congregate around the apex dude. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think, I think at some point we're going to have to, like, honestly sit with it and be like, OK, what do I what do I really want? And if what I really want is going to be this top one percent dude. I'm going to have to be. Savannah James. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to, you know, I know LeBron ain't, you know, but he's LeBron though. Yeah. He's the king. <laughs> you know, or you know LeBron be cheating. Well, has his side pieces. <laughs> Him and Steph Curry, people have had debates. They're like they have to have other women. I actually don't it's, <clears throat> let me let me not say maybe because he's light skinned, but I don't I, I think I think Steph is is Steph's probably, you know what I'm saying, he's okay. right, but LeBron, because the, the, even with the athlete thing, like you have to understand at that level, like it's women sneaking into your hotel room. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about just women sneaking. I'm talking about IG models who have blue checks in their DMs mm -hmm. are in your bed after a game. Mm -hmm. Again, not to say this is right, but like as a woman who understands men, there should be a sense of 
Don't do it, but I get it. Mm-hmm. It's not right, but it's life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth the conversation. Very worth the conversation. But you just have to be, I think that just to even be receptive to that mm. type of discussion, you have to be able to remove yourself from your ego. And yeah. I don't know if a lot of people are there. I hope people can get there, mm. but our egos definitely have us in a chokehold with a lot of things. I think what's difficult, you know, maybe when it comes to women being able to have that conversation is because I think a lot of, and correct me if I'm wrong, I've never been a woman, I got the other parts. A lot of women's sexual selection is deeply rooted in procreation. And it's deeply rooted in not only am I saying yes or granting you access to my body because I like you, but because some part of me even subconsciously is saying that you would be a good mate to not only protect me, but also protect our potential offspring long term. And that's why you see even on the physical um, you know, plane, women are selecting for height and symmetry and muscularity and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I think particularly because in the mating process, a woman's life is at risk. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you look at postpartum, you look at um, all the things, the preeclampsia, all the things that are involved. There are a lot more boxes, just naturally, that a male has to check to get access to you sexually. And a lot of those boxes are emotional and mental boxes. It's not the same for men. So I think the assumption from women is that men have that same criteria, type of criteria, to decide to have a sex with a woman as a woman does to decide to have sex with a man. And it's just not the case. Because um, our lives aren't at risk. I don't... I, I would agree with that logic. If you are talking about a woman who doesn't use sex to fill a void. Mm. Because... If we were following that logic, then a lot of women wouldn't be getting pregnant by men who are no good and don't take care of their kids because they would have subconsciously selected someone who should be a good father. But that's not really the case for a lot of people. So I'm not sure. I don't I don't really know about that. 